another willing participant for the 2012 edition of Teammates in a Club. It's Mark Tian, Syracuse Chief Infielder, Outfielder Extraordinaire, as it's listed officially on the roster now. Correct. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, thanks for playing our game. If you lose, you do get the home game. The home game? Yeah. You can this take, game at home? You can take Teammates in a Glove with you. Uh, at home. That'd be unreal. That'd be awesome. Maybe get your, your new son. That's Matt if I win or if I lose? Uh, both. Okay. <laughs> We're going to give you a glove and your teammates, and uh, you can play at home. Perfect. You think Lauren would like to play? I think she'd love it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're familiar with our rules, are you? Um, yeah, I've watched every episode. Okay. It took <laughs> roughly six minutes. <laughs> yeah. What, what Mark's going to do is we put a bunch of his former teammates from baseball years past into this glove as the name might suggest. And he's going to pull a name out, and we're going to read the name, and he's going to talk about that teammate. Can Are you, you ad lib? Are you I'll, I'll try, it? yeah. Are you going to add anything to this as I? Maybe. OK. Generally, this is, this is all about you. My time to shine? <laughs> That's right. Okay. That's right, just like the so I prefer third it. batter of the first inning. <laughs> so you ready? I'm ready. All right. Pick your first teammate and uh, let us know who it is. Jake Peavy. Jake Peavy. What you got on Jake Peavy? I played with him in Chicago, right-handed pitcher. Threw so hard he tore his entire lat off of his shoulder blade, I understand. But uh, good dude, uh, a real bulldog. I He's believe. an actual bulldog. Yes, yes. And I like dogs, so it worked out well. But yeah, he, he was hurt a lot of the time I was in uh, Chicago, but very reliable uh, starting pitcher when healthy and good teammate. So your familiarity with him is generally uh, him rehabbing? Um, that and being a bulldog on the mound, yes. Right. Yes. Okay. Uh, name number two. Joe McEwing. Joe McEwing. Yes. Super Joe. Super Joe, yes. He's actually one of my favorite teammates I've ever had. Really? And currently the third base coach of the Chicago White Sox. So. Why is he one of your favorite teammates? Um, probably because he just, if you looked purely at tools, he was a guy that, you know, didn't project out to be, you know, a, a longtime big leaguer. And he worked harder than anybody I've ever been around, was always the first guy at the field, last one to leave, and just loved doing anything he could do to give himself an edge. And that's why he had a, you know, good career. And that's why he's already in the big leagues as a coach, because he, you know, just really goes about the right way and kind of motivated me to try to, you know, play the game the way he did. I thought you were a self-starter. Self-starter? Well, yeah, clearly I am, but always helps to have other teammates around you that are, you know, trying to go about the same way, I guess. What did you see him do off the field that was impressive to you? Um, well, I saw him bench press a lot of weight. Um, I don't think people would expect that. He's sort of a, a you know, smaller guy. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't know. He it, Just his whole routine. I, re I remember talking to him once, and my goal was always to one day of the season to beat him to the field one day, and uh, it didn't happen because I would show up early on purpose, and he'd already be there sweating somehow, just ready to <laughs> get after something. So I don't know. Just his routine of always being there early and working nonstop. All right, teammate number three. Nelson Cruz, you went way back. Yeah, yeah. You went to the way back. Michigan. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering how you picked which teammates. Um, but anyway, Nelson Cruz, I was a teammate of his in, uh, I believe, A ball, maybe Double A with the Oakland A's, wow. and uh, he was the good player, but I think didn't pan out with the A's and ended up over at Texas and has become one of the best right fielders in the game. So. I don't Did you see know. it coming? Yeah, I mean, he was always a big, powerful, you know, player, but I didn't know that he would pan out and just kind of take off in the big leagues like he did. But the one thing we actually, I used to just, I think boning your bats is illegal. I don't know. Rules are. We'll check on that. Rules are hazy. But anyway, um, I took two ash bats and I would rub them together. And I'm not sure it mattered at all, made them harder or anything, but every time I did it, I would get more hits. So every time I see Nelson Cruz, he acts like he's rubbing two bats together. So apparently he took that and has turned it into an all-star career. And, you know, it's still helping me, but he might have got the better, you know, end of the stick yeah, there. The, the proverbial <laughs> stick. Yes. All right, one more. Just one more? Well, we can do multiple. 
Nick Swisher. It's a good one as well. He was, uh, he was in a book. He was in the you. book Moneyball, yes. The book I made famous, and you know he's still living off the fame I created for that book. But um, Swish, is, uh, we got drafted together, and right away, I don't know, I always joke that he was a first rounder far before the draft ever happened, because he, <laughs> he has been the same ever since I got to know him coming out of, of Ohio State, and we went to Vancouver, started our career, and lived together in Modesto, and then eventually in Sacramento when we were both in AAA. Um, but he's a great dude. He, the whole act of, you know, big time or hot shot, whatever, like, it's cool because it's not an act at all. Like, that's just him, and he's always on, and even when you go home, he, you know. But he's, he's just a guy that I think loves the limelight, so it was perfect that he ended up in New York, and it's been great to watch him just take off and have a great career. And, uh, yeah, always always made it fun to come to the ballpark because he's, he's just a good dude. and you know, has fun playing the game, which is the goal. So you're saying he was like born behind the wheel of a Ferrari? I think so, yes. <laughs> yes, there's got, I don't know the story of his birth, but it was something spectacular, I'm sure. <laughs> All right, one more. Okay. One more. <laughs> It'll be on the director's cut. <laughs> Oh, Matt Stairs, what a good next choice. <laughs> Immediate next choice. I'm glad choice. he came up first, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, pitch hitter extraordinaire. Pitch hitter extraordinaire, yeah. Stairs is awesome. He's Canadian, which I claim to be. Um, and he was just great to, to have as a teammate. He's awesome because you watch him at the plate, and he would just take a huge hack like he was playing softball but one of the most knowledgeable guys about the baseball swing that I've ever played with. Like during my time in Kansas City had about 13 hitting coaches and Matt Stairs might have been my favorite because I mean he was just a player obviously but you know I'd work with him in the cage and he could break down the swing and really help a lot of different guys even though it looked like his approach was just kind of you know uppercut and try to hit a homer but he really understood the game and I won't be shocked to find out if he's you know a hitting coach down the line. I know he's, you know, taking some time with his family now that he's retired, but uh, great dude, always fun to play with. And, and like I said, he, he made sure I could play on the Canadian national team for the World Baseball Classic. So, yeah, great guy. What gives with that swing then? If he knows the swing inside out, then why has he got a three wood? Well, I guess he realized a three wood would give him about 15 years in the big leagues and uh, plenty of money. So, you know, he had some great, great moments in the big leagues and a lot of, you know, a career that a lot of guys would hope to have, so I guess he figured out that was the best swing for him. Well, Mark Tian, thank you for taking a walk down memory lane with us. Yes, I enjoyed it thoroughly. You do win the home game. Awesome. Yeah. Did so, I get the Xavier Paul glove as well? Is that part of it? <laughs> this actually is a, this is a prop. Yeah. So you don't get this one. Okay. But there will be a glove. Yeah. Probably one from my locker. You might get to take Gary Payton home. That'd be amazing. Call him. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thank you. That's our next edition of Teammates in a Glove 2012.